Coach Beckett here. Welcome to my kettlebell workout. You need a kettlebell for today's workout, and it's great if you have a heavy and a light bell. Um, and we're just going to warm up and start by how to pick up a kettlebell. Um, you always want to engage a kettlebell with proper technique, so here I'm hinging at my hips, engaging my core, and standing using my legs to lift the bell. So if I was going to do um, something with one kettlebell, um, like so, I would pick it up appropriately, and then to lower it back down, I would again engage my diaphragm and hinge at my hips to lower it down. Uh, for some situations, you'll need a bottoms up position or a, a upside down kettlebell position, perhaps you might call it. But um, and in order to do that, you're going to want to grab the kettlebell by the base of the horns, curl that kettlebell up, and then use your legs to stand. And this brings us to our position for our first mobility drill, which is a halo sweep. You're going to bring the bell around your head and then bring it bottom side up back to center. And this is going to stretch out and activate our shoulders, rotator cuff, even our core a little bit. You're going to have to engage your diaphragm and your glutes to support you. Here's what it looks like from the back, just kind of scooping it around here, sweeping it around your head. Obviously, if you've got a giant messy bun like I do, it's going to be a little bit harder. Um, but just a great warm-up drill, great mobility drill. I like to use um, my breath pattern, so take a deep breath in through your nose, scoop that kettlebell around with stable glutes and core, exhaling as you bring it to center. Breathing patterns are going to obviously help you a lot with kettlebell training and any strength training. Whenever you're lifting a heavy load, it's important to be aware of your breath. I try to always inhale through my nose and exhale from my mouth. Exhale the exertion points. All right, so this is a goblet squat. You're gonna lower down until your elbows touch kind of around the knee area. Depending on your anatomy, your squat might look a little different than mine, but what we're trying to do here is use the kettlebell to engage our core. Um, it's front loaded, so I'm able to reach a little bit deeper than maybe if the weight was on my back, like a barbell. Um, so I'm just gonna keep that bell bottoms up, drop my hips down, my feet are shoulder width apart, and I'm just kind of touching my elbows to my knees there as a as a baseline or as a point of reference. I'm doing 12 squats here. Inhale, tight core, exhale and stand up. And now we're gonna go into a bottoms up overhead single bell press or goblet press, I like to call them. So you're just gonna exhale and push the bell over your head. Now, you might need to pause here and change the bell or you know, depending on what weight your bell is, it might be appropriate for this. Or you might need to change something out or grab something more appropriate. So. Use the technique I showed you in picking up the kettlebell if you do change out weights here. I've put these two bottoms up position movements together so that we can just kind of roll back and forth because this is the only time we're going to have the bell in the bottoms up position today. So back to our squats. My pup is making an appearance here brownly, so we're back to 12 goblet squats into six goblet presses. You could also call this a bottoms up squat or bottoms up single bell press. Notice here that I am able to get my hips into a nice low parallel position because that kettlebell is held in front of me. I'm engaging my core, keeping my posture strong, my joints stacked. Shoulders over hips as much as I can, knees over ankles. Exhale and then push the bell overhead, trying to get the belt directly on top of your head. Squeezing the biceps to the ears for six strong goblet presses. Definitely gonna wake up the shoulders here. So switch out the bell if you need something a little bit lighter, squeezing the biceps to the ears. Excellent job on the squat and shoulder press circuit. You can lower the bell safely down. What's nice about bringing a kettlebell up, you usually put it back on the floor the same way you brought it up, and that's just a squat, slow release down. Okay, so I'm switching over to my heavier bell now. You might only have one kettlebell at home and that's fine. Um, but we're going to do a kettlebell deadlift next. So a heavier weight is appropriate for this. You're going to straddle the kettlebell. You can see it's in line with my shin bones here. Grab a firmly onto the handle. Exhale and stand, driving your hips forward. Hinge at the hips. And I'll show you a front view here. You don't have to start yet. I'm just demonstrating. And then you can jump in with me. Shoulder width apart, hinging at my hips. Firm grip on the handle. Rigid core, exhale, stand. Okay, you can jump in with me here. Let's do 12 deadlifts. Hinging at the hips and at the knees. This is not a straight-legged kettlebell deadlift. I am bending at my knees and my hips. I'm pretending almost that I'm trying to hit the wall behind me as a target. 
So I'm really trying to push my hips back. I'm almost making a triangle from my shoulders, hips to knees. So push the hips back, feel the stretch in the hamstrings, and then squeeze the glutes as you stand. It should almost feel like you're squeezing your core at the same time too. So well done there. I'm gonna use my small kettlebell and my, my appropriate technique that I showed you at the beginning to lift the kettlebell. And now I'm doing oblique reaches. So you can jump in with me here. I'm doing 12 per side. So just slide that kettlebell down as far as you can and then using your core, squeeze your obliques to stand back up. I like to inhale down, exhale up. And that's where you should feel it, right where my hand was there, your obliques. It's obviously great if you can switch to a lighter bell for this. You might be strong enough to use a heavy bell for the deadlifts and then a lighter bell for the oblique reaches, but if you only have one kettlebell, that's fine. You just wanna make sure you're not overdoing it on any of these movements, and probably the toughest movement we already did, and that's the overhead press. But you're gonna have to use your best judgment out there and just be smart. It's always better to go lighter first and get the form down. This bell was light enough too that I just switched sides by passing it from hand to hand. But on the next set, if you have a heavy kettlebell, I'll demonstrate the lower down switch sides technique there too. So always lower down with great technique, which I did right there, hinging at the hips. Go back to the kettlebell, straddle it, and deadlifts to 12. I'm back to my heavy kettlebell. Since this is an all lower body exercise, I switched to a heavier weight. You're welcome to use something lighter or stay with one kettlebell for the entire workout, as long as it's appropriate to you. I tend to use heavier weights for my lower body and a little lighter weights for my upper body, but you can do whatever you want out there as long as your technique is there. That's what I'm looking for. So hinging at the hips, soft knees, exhale as you stand up. Awesome job. Using great technique, approach the kettlebell to the side, squat to lower down to pick it up, use your legs to lift, and you're ready to go. Hopefully reach. 12 per side. So what's great about uh, this workout is this is a la an example of a lateral exercise, so something that happens in a plane of movement that's side to side, which is something that we don't do often as humans. So we can tend to get you know get injured doing something side to side, um, just an activity of daily life or even a sport. So training laterally is really important to make our workouts functional. They replicate movements like picking things up and putting things down, just like this workout does. So doing movements that are up and down, side to side, and rotational are important to, to keep us from getting injured and perform well in our sports. You can see that we've switched sides here, and now we're gonna do 12 oblique reaches on the other side. Kettlebells are also great because they tend to pull you one direction or in another, whereas a dumbbell doesn't quite have that anatomy. So a kettlebell might feel heavier than an equivalent weighted dumbbell. Um, a 10 pound kettlebell might feel heavier than a 10 pound dumbbell just because of that heavy cannonball shape. So another way that kettlebell training is a little bit more core, a little bit harder in some ways. All right, back to deadlifts here. We've already done one. There's number two. Inhale, exhale, hinge at the hips, squeeze the glutes and core. Try to keep those shoulders pulled back for good posture and try to keep that neck neutral. Here's a front view, and this is our final set. You can see my feet are underneath of my shoulders. I'm looking strong, feeling strong, smiling because I love kettlebell training and I love getting stronger. Well done, guys. This is a great exercise to tone the legs and the glutes. It's a great way to learn how to pick something up and put something down the right way, so I love a deadlift. All right, pick your kettlebell up just like you did for the oblique reach, but now we're gonna do a pass-through lunge. So step forward, passing the kettlebell to the opposing hand as you lower into a lunge. This is a tough movement, so I'm using my lighter kettlebell. Lunge, pass through, push back. You can also do this as a reverse lunge instead of a forward lunge. So that was my demonstration. If you did a few, that's fine. I'm just getting my space set up and then we can do some together. Here we go. We're doing 12 total pass through lunges. Notice that I'm still working on somewhat stacking my joints, knees over ankle, shoulders over hips, as much as I can. Um, obviously, sometimes in sport, we don't have perfect posture, so it's okay if we have a few movement adaptions that fit for your anatomy. But in general, we wanna try to keep the joints stacked as we train our quads, our coordination, and our glutes. If you have any knee issues, you can try making this a reverse lunge instead of a forward lunge to take a little pressure off that knee a great and challenging lower body exercise. Well done on the pass through lunch.
Next, we're gonna do a bent over row. Now, you might want something to support your posture, especially if you're somebody with, that struggled with some injuries. It'll give you a little extra support. You don't have to use um, a target. You can use a chair or a ball or, or anything, really. I'll show you how to do a row with or without one. So if you don't have a target, this is a single arm row for your core and arms, and this is with support right there, okay? So those are your demos. I want you to do 12 per side now with me. So you can go ahead and start. We're jumping right in here. Great for your core, great for your arms. I'm working hard, this bell is hard for me with my arms, so I'm definitely working at a little bit of a tempo here. So 12 per side, let's switch sides and try the other side. You don't have to put your hand on a target. In fact, here's what it looks like without. Your feet are just under your shoulders, you've got soft knees, and you're hinging at your hips so that you can work your upper back muscles and shoulders and your core. Great job. Go ahead and pick the kettlebell up safely again like you're accustomed to doing now. And let's do another set of pass-through lunges, 12 total. Again, working coordination since you have got to pass that bell from hand to hand. And working the legs. This is an example of a functional exercise that can be sport specific if you're an athlete or just a great exercise if you're somebody that requires a little bit of hand-eye coordination as well as lower body strength. It's also just a great exercise if you want to tone your legs and want something different than just a regular old lunge. Choose a weight that's appropriate for you and be careful setting your bell down. We're gonna go back to those rows with or without support, 12 per side. Again, nice flat back. You can see how using um, a hand support just kind of ensures I keep a nice straight line in my back, engages my core, keeps my lower back safe, and here's what it looks like without a support. We're doing 12 total, and I'm gonna switch sides here. Again, squeezing that core, we're working on one arm at a time. Doing single leg and single arm exercises are really important because a lot of times in life we don't have equal distribution of weight with two you know, sets of resistance. So doing single leg and single arm exercises are really important for functional training and you'll find both of those in today's workout. So well done at working some rotation, some core and arms with that single arm row. We're gonna take it to the floor for a chest circuit next. You will want a lighter weight, so if you don't have a lighter kettlebell, you may choose to use a lighter weight or something different for resistance if you'd like. Here's how you get the kettlebell in position for this workout. Uh, you're gonna need to lay on the ground, like uh, kind of like, like you're about to fall asleep. Wrap one hand over the bell, the arm you're gonna be lifting with, and grip with the other hand for support. Roll onto your back and press up from the armpit. Okay, you're ready to do a single arm press now. My arm's 90 degrees from my shoulder. I am slightly rotating my hand as I punch up. This is a single arm kettlebell chest press from the floor. So one reason why I'm able to use a little bit heavier of a weight is the floor is stopping me when I hit 90 degrees. If I was on a bench, I would get a lot deeper. This would be a lot harder. So the weight is definitely appropriate for this exercise and for me because I'm on the floor and because I know it's an appropriate weight for me. So definitely, you know, if you're gonna be doing a floor press in other circumstances, you could go heavier or lighter. Um, you just gotta kinda use some discretion there. So I'm gonna switch sides and I'll show you how to sweep the bell around your head if you'd like to do a convenient switch sides there. But again, wrap the kettlebell with one hand, use the other arm to pull it to your, your uh, armpit or pin it in there, and then press up once your shoulder is packed and ready. Exhale as you push the weight up. We're just keeping the hips flat for now. I wanted to show you that kind of grip and roll tactic on both sides, but to conveniently switch sides, I will show you for our second set how you can do that without getting up, dragging the bell around, etc. Okay, and it's here it is. We're just gonna lay on our side. We're gonna halo sweep around our head to the other side. Get into that kind of cradle position with the kettlebell pull into the armpit, get the shoulder ready, pack it in, and press up. Here we go, 12 presses. Now it's important that you get ready in this, this style because it, you know, kettlebell training, you can injure yourself just grabbing the weight and beginning a movement without making sure your core and your, you know, your shoulder hip joints are activated and stable, ready to go. 
So it's important that you do such things in kettlebell training. Let's switch sides and try it again. Here you can see me grip the kettlebell, roll into position, pack my shoulder, and get going. 12 reps again. Single arm chest press. From the floor. Exhale as you push that weight up. Play to the side. And now we're gonna do a goblet press. So we've done two sets of 12 per side. Now we're gonna grab the kettlebell by the horns, roll onto our stomach, exhale and press up. And I'm gonna keep a nice tight grip on the horns here. So jump in with me now when you're ready. If you like it to make it more challenging, you can lift your hips um, for an extra core and glute challenge while you do a chest press. So all you need is one kettlebell for this. I've kind of designed the workout just in case you only have one kettlebell at home. You can kind of use the same kettlebell for all of these movements if you like and rest. Lay to the side, carefully bring the kettlebell down. And to rest, we're gonna do some diaphragm breathing. So just lay flat on your back, place your fingertips on your tummy, take a sharp breath in through your nose for four counts. Exhale out of your belly through your mouth for four counts. Inhale nose, exhale mouth. Very good. 15 seconds is all you get. Grab the kettlebell by the horns, roll onto your back, and exhale press up. 12 reps. Goblet press is my way of calling these. I'm sure they go by several different names, but you just have your hands on the horn. Single bell press. Just working some different muscle groups here with a different grip, engaging things a little differently, just having some variety. Variety is the spice of life here, and we're, you know, over halfway through our workout now, so exhale, relax, roll the kettlebell to the side, and safely get up from the floor position. Very good gonna rearrange my area here so we get ready for our next circuit. Pick the kettlebell up by using your legs. So careful pick up there. Nice wide stance. You're gonna lean to one side or squat on one side as you stretch the other leg and then pull the kettlebell up into an upright row. Go ahead and jump in. We're gonna do 12 total. Touch the bell down to the floor. Pull the elbows up. Toes are pointed straight ahead. Squat on one side, stretch on the other side. And this is another great lateral plane of movement exercise that trains your legs, your glutes, a little bit of your core, because it's gotta be that your stable base. Of course, those deltoids, those beautiful shoulder muscles that are in charge of pulling that kettlebell up. And we just did 12 there, so I'm gonna hinge at the hips to carefully lower the kettlebell down. And go to my next exercise. Level one. You can see even when I move that kettlebell around, I'm loading at my hips correctly. All right, level one, I'm just gonna reach towards the kettlebell handle with no weight, just a single leg reach. Okay, so level one, this is what you're doing here. Level two, you're gonna use the kettlebell as weight, so carefully pick the kettlebell up using your legs, hinge at your hips using the kettlebell, and I want you guys to start your rep count now. So if you're using weight, jump in with me here. If you're not using weight, use the kettlebell as your target. This is a great exercise for balance, hamstrings, glutes, and a little bit of core too. I mean, you have to use, engage your, your core in order to get this exercise done you know, well. So let's switch sides here. And you know you're using your core when A, you don't wobble and fall over, but also because you can see how I'm making a perfect T in the letter as a letter here and not a W where I'm just arching my back to reach the floor and sloppily raising my leg. You know, my, my heel always stays in line with my shoulder blade. So if you can't do that, just do body weight. That being said, let's go back to side lunge to upright row. I know we're flying today, guys. I'm not letting you rest very much because, hey, time is money. We gotta be efficient with our time here. So side lunge lean, upright row, work those legs and inner thighs, work those shoulders. Keep that core cinched up and zipped up nice and strong to keep you stable today. So even though this isn't an abdominal exercise, nor is the single leg reach or even the deadlift, what have you, just by using the kettlebell and using functional movement patterns like lateral, rotational, single arm, single leg stuff, we have to use our core. So cinch your abs together. Here's level one of that single leg reach. I'm gonna show four. Again, heel in line with shoulders. Use your core to stay in a nice, strong, straight line. Here's level two. We're gonna do six per side, you guys. Jump on in. We've got less than 10 minutes to go, so let's work hard here. 
work the hamstrings, work balance. I am softening my knee slightly here, but I'm keeping that straight line from my hips to my ankle and from my shoulder to my hips. You could take a dowel from my shoulder and it would probably stay in line with my heel. And that's what I want you to imagine. Imagine there's a yardstick from your shoulder to your back heel. I've switched side here. I've got six on each side, two to go here. And fantastic. Oops, maybe three. There you go. Awesome work, guys. Carefully hinge at the hips to lower your kettlebell down. Don't forget, picking up and setting the kettlebell down is important for your safety. Okay, we're gonna start a uh, kettlebell swing series now. So in order to do a kettlebell swing, step about a foot behind the bell, and we're gonna learn a hike pass first, which looks like this. Okay, your turn. You're gonna pull the kettlebell underneath your butt and set it back down on the ground. Fully set it down. So hike it back, set it down. Hike it, set it down. You're trying to hit your, your wrists to the inside of your thighs. You wanna really aim for your crotch, is what I'm gonna say. So even if you're a guy, yes, you won't hit anything special there. You're gonna be fine. So like I was just demonstrating, start a foot behind the bell. Let's do another set. Yank that kettlebell right to your zipper. It's attack the zipper is what my coach used to tell me. You wanna get it right, right underneath your hips. Otherwise, you're gonna start using your lower back. So that's a hike pass. That's the first initial part of a swing. And here's what one swing looks like. I want you to just do one swing with me. Hike it, push the hips forward, and bring it down. It's all legs, give it a try. Hike it, push the hips forward, bring it down. That's it, just the one swing. One more time. Push forward, very nice. One more. Push forward, excellent. Take a quick rest. Notice that I had soft arms. You can have straight arms if you'd like, but I don't want you to use your arms for power. These are Russian swings. Here we go. Push. One swing at a time. That's all I need. Soft elbows. Keep going. This way you learn how to put a kettlebell down and pick it up to begin a set or end a set. So I want to make sure you know how to do those things before we actually start doing kettlebell swings. Good. So those are just single sinks. That's how you start a set and end a set. And that's why I taught you the hike pass first, the initial part, then the single swings. Let's try three to five in a row. Push one, push two, use those legs, three, and rest. Let's try that again. All legs, you guys. Exhale as you press those hips forward. Shoot from the hips. Let's try five this time. Push one, push two, push three, four, and five. Exhale as you push the hips forward. And notice how I bring that kettlebell down, you guys. You bring it back to your hips and then to the floor. Hike pass, seven swing sets. One, two, remember aim for the zipper. Three, soft arms, four, exhale, five, tight core, six, and seven, bring it down and relax. You never exit a set of swings just by shooting it forward and then putting it straight on the ground. Make sure you take that momentum out by bringing it to the hips and then down. Okay, let's do 10 swings here. So a full set of 10 swings, we're actually working now. You've done the dy dynamic movement prep for it. You can really see how I'm bringing the kettlebell to my zipper here. All glute power, soft elbows. Good, once you get to 10, bring it back to the hips and down to the floor. Pop around right onto the forearms for an elbow plank and 30 second plank. Now, that was a whirlwind, so let me give you some advice while you're doing your plank. First of all, get your heart rate down by breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. The best takeaway from a metabolic conditioning exercise like kettlebell swings is to remember that all of the power comes from hip extension or thrusting your hips forward. The arms remain soft. Your core remains engaged as your stable support so you don't use your lower back. And finally, if you don't have the coordination down, rewind and start at the series back at the hike pass with a single bell swing, so for the single, single swing sets. All right, let's do 10 again. If your coordination's off, if you don't look like I am, where you're bringing the kettlebell directly to your hips, if your kettlebell's going down by your knees, or if you're swinging wildly, or if you're really out of breath, or if your back hurts, you A, might not be ready for these, or B, need to go back and watch the technique again, from the hike pass to the single swings up. All right, that was 10, back to our 30 second plank. I like to do circuits like this because the the kettlebell swings obviously are great for working your legs, getting your heart rate up, 
great metabolism boost. And then supersetting that with an exercise, just like a core stability plank or a core, core endurance plank. Really nice to work your core, you know, burn some calories, burn some, burn some heart rate, you know, get that heart rate up, get the intensity up, and then come back to a settle down exercise. It's my favorite, one of my favorite things to do, so I'm so happy to bring this workout to you. Let's do one final set of swings. Yank it back to the hips. Again, using your legs to power this, using that hip extension, hinging at your hips, thrusting forward, squeezing your core, exhaling and getting that heart rate up. Working hard here because we're almost done. Bring that kettlebell safely to the ground, set it to the side, and let's just work some core endurance. Squeezing our core. If you'd like to do some single arm reaches or some single leg raises, that's a fine way to work stability as well. Inhale through your nose, get your heart rate down slightly. We've got less than two minutes to go now. Stretches on deck. You've done phenomenal, guys, and kettlebell training is, you know, it can be overwhelming and intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. You are a confident and strong athlete when you're working with me, and I'm here to help you overcome some of that fear. Well done on your plank. On all fours, now let's do some T-spine rotation. So take your hand and reach across your body to the opposite knee, and then open up, reach towards the ceiling. This is going to stretch out your spine, your um, the middle of your back here. It's great for your spine mobility. And again, none of these things should hurt your lower back. So if you're not ready to do some of this, then obviously either consult with your physician before beginning or make sure you're using an appropriate way. It's always better to go light and get the form down than just to start at something advanced. So I wouldn't recommend this workout to everyone. I want you to be sure that you're doing this uh, as you're ready. So uh, T-spine rotations, let's take care of that spine and that back because we did some stuff that requires strength but should not hurt your lower back. Child's pose stretch for the lats and the low back. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth as you finish with this gorgeous stretch. You did an awesome job today and I'd love to see you complete this once a week and track your progress with that kettlebell weight. Well done again, thanks for joining me. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on my newest workouts I post weekly as well as visit www.kawakacoaching.com for recipes, wellness blogs, and more. See you again soon.